All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. We got a nice plate of figs in front of us here. It's pretty typical every, you know, couple few days or so, I pick a plate of figs like this. Uh, you know, we're in September, so it's definitely fig season here in the Philadelphia area. And uh, I wanted to talk about a variety once again called Moro de Caneva. It's just been undoubtedly, I think, probably the most reliable fig I have. Um, in terms of sheer numbers of fruits, in terms of the size of the fruits, in terms of the quality of the fruits, uh, in terms of always getting one that's good. Um, I know that the fig pretty much with the shortest hang time probably will be the most reliable, but, but this fig, some, something about it just, it just seems like a better consistent performer than, uh, than most. Um, so this is a commercial variety and I think for that reason, you know, it only makes sense that it would be uh, reliable and obviously of a larger size. This is in my mind like a mid-season fig or a mid-sized fig, excuse me, that also tastes really quite good. Um, there's not many commercial figs that I know of that taste as good as this. So Black Mission, um, Brown Turkey, you know, um, one in particular that I do think would rival this is the Panache, but the majority of them do not. Uh, this is just above and beyond, I think, the other commercial figs. And uh, for that reason, you have to give it some credit um, now, what I like to do is even if I'm not getting these as perfect as I want, because you just can't always get them perfect. Um, you know, the, the hang time on this is a little bit longer. So a fig like Little Ruby or The One or Rissoulette or some of these others that I've been ripening this year that have that shorter hang time, they're very easily able to ripen to the, the quality and the ripeness level that I want very consistently. And so because of that, um, you know, I don't have to really worry about picking them early necessarily. Some, some of them I do to avoid the rain, but this fig as an example, I would have to pick slightly early because of the rain because the hang time is just a little bit longer. And what the nice thing about this fig is, is that it has such a high bricks. Now I find that when I, what I like to do is with a lot of these figs, because I can't eat them all. You know, this is a lot of figs. Um, so what I like to do is actually cut them in half, like you see here, put them skin side down on a plate, and then put them in the fridge. And the uh, colder temperatures in the fridge really make these, um, it really prevents them from getting any mold or, or spoiling or rotting in any way, right? It halts that, that microbe development for the most part. Um, and then, of course, what the fridge is doing, it's also kind of acting as a very slow dehydrator. And so these figs, even if I don't pick them perfect, like, like this fig here looks pretty good, but it's not exactly the perfect ripeness that I would, I would eat. I mean, of course, I, I would enjoy eating this. Uh, but all I have to do is stick this on a plate skin side down and they turn into really good dried figs very quickly. Uh, they'll dehydrate, they'll intensify. They're amazing. Um, this is by far just seriously one of the best figs I got. Mm. It's a very figgy fig, sweet, mild berry. As the season goes on, uh, and that one there in particular, as things get a bit cooler outside, it might have a little bit of a uh, cinnamon, spicy, maybe even slightly bitter flavor to the, uh, to the skin. But it's August, I'm sorry, it's September 20th now. And that's the first one actually I've eaten with that, that bitter skin. It's extremely early. Well, it's not extremely early. It's an early fig, probably around the same time as Hardy Chicago but it's extremely reliable. It also produces a good Breva, as I learned this year. That was just 
insanely good. So for me, I can't wait to have more of my trees uh, reach another, a higher level of maturity. And it just is one of the best. Um, I think it's probably right below Smith, right below Hatib de Argentile. This one last year produced the most figs at the highest quality for me. And this year I could say it probably is doing something similar. But Little Ruby produced so many good figs. And, and even, um, yeah, it's probably right up there with Little Ruby. Now, Rondé Bordeaux is producing a lot of figs, but unfortunately the second it rains these turn to crap so they ferment they spoil the eyes open the shape is wrong some of them split with these they're they're just perfect you know i've talked a lot about the shape in the past and that shape certainly helps um the skin on them though can be a little bit uh a little bit tough in terms of not the eating quality but the in terms of touching them and feeling them. And that's kind of what I think makes them more of a commercial fig. But um, the skin definitely is not the best. It's not like Celeste where it just totally avoids all that rain and sheds all that rain off of the skin. But the nice part is it hangs correctly so the eye is rather protected. Doesn't that look so good? So the skin though has more of that, um, man, how do I explain this? It's almost like a plastic feel to it. Uh, I know that sounds terrible, but some of these other figs have more of like, uh, I, I wanna say velvet, but even velvet's the wrong word. It's like a softer, uh, like um, almost slightly uh, like sort of gritty, whereas some others are like completely smooth, hard plastic or something. And so those figs don't do well with the rain here, it seems like. Uh, this is one here as an example that has some of that. This is um, Harry's Crete, where you can kind of definitely feel a similarity between this that it, it almost is like rubbery. Um, it almost is like, um, yeah, I think rubbery is kind of a word, is maybe the right term here. Uh, a little sticky. Um, whereas the other skin that we kind of look for here is maybe, hmm, I don't know, maybe like, um, I don't know. I'm sure you guys are kind of getting the idea though. And now the flies are getting around my figs. But let me show you guys now the trees. Every year the trees get more and more mature. Man, that one was so good. That was a really good ripeness level on that one. Um, let me show you guys some of the trees because we, we have a number of them that, again, this year didn't, wasn't even protected um, at all in the ground. And so this one here got hit pretty hard and it took a while for it to wake up in the spring. And as a result, it's been actually not as established this year as it was last. Although not really ever, I would say the most established in this location here on the west side of the property. But two of the trees, actually th three of the trees survived to some degree this year. We have uh, the Fico Seco right here, which uh, is still producing quite a few fruits. I've been trying to bag them as much as possible with the organza bags. It produced a nice Brava and uh, it grew rather nicely. So I'm expecting this thing to probably survive again. Six degree Fahrenheit low. It's a fig that's rather hardy and uh, a lot of them now are basically done their crops. September 20th, and the majority of them now are finished. Here's a Nerino here that's very well established, and this thing did survive as well. You can see the uh, silver wood down here from last year. And so this thing produced some really nice fruits on it. Uh, I think it grew a little too quickly though. 
And then we had a little bit of a drought. So there was a hormonal problem, then there was a lack of water, and this thing didn't produce as many fruits as I would have thought it was going to, but the fruits that it did was very, very good and uh, of a larger and higher quality. Here's another one here. And I think this one here, yeah, this survived down there at the base, but not a ton of survival in terms of, you know, how much of the tree actually survived. Uh, like some of these others, like Azores Dark survived up to five feet and same thing with this Long de Oot, uh, about five feet of it survived. So regardless, uh, it's still a rather hardy tree. I think it just depends on the tree. Depends on the location. There's so many things, so many factors to consider. And then I know it's rather loud back here, but I got a young um, Mora de Caneva here that actually produced a few fruit. And then we have another one down here that produced a few fruit, which are yet to be ripened. But uh, yeah, it's just a super reliable fig. Even when small, when young, it produces easily low light to set those fruit buds. The hang time is a slightly below average, maybe five or six days. And again, it's just one of the best for this, uh, this location here. Um, very happy to have it. I may probably at some point in the future be selling this maybe as a commercial fig. So what a great choice. Again, I can't eat all of these, but just put them skin side down in the fridge and they are just so, so good. Anyway, guys, that's my yearly update on the uh, Moro de Caneva. We'll see you guys soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.